above the ad mark. So today we're going to see if we can do this moldboard plowing. Just check our oil levels. This one's just a little above the mark there. I haven't moldboard plowed in like five years. I think the last time it was the rye. It gets a little taller like that. I would rather plow it than spray it. But anyway. This plow is what you call a semi-mounted plow. It's an International 550, and I think if it was a four bottom, it would be a 450. So five bottoms, and we have a side deal hitch that's on hydraulics, so we're able to move it over if you need to. But we're going to be plowing in the bottoms today where it's more level, so it won't be quite as necessary, but it's sure nice. We got 14 acres to do today. And it's all very heavy, heavy loamy ground. It's probably some of our better, better soils. Probably need a little air conditioning because I think it's going to be another warm one. It was 90 degrees yesterday. I got the plow out. I plowed uh, two small, skinny fields all one way, so it took a little longer. I wanted to take my time to get. Now this one, I'm gonna have to figure out how to start this, so we, we're gonna and we end up with two dead furrows when we get done. So I'm thinking, oh, I did it last time. I think I plowed it away from the creek. This time we'll plow it towards the creek and towards the hillside. It's a beautiful crop of rye. It's almost a shame to plow it out there, but so this this is our cover crop from last year. This cover crop. And, and it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to grow over the course of the fall and into the spring to um, absorb all the nutrients that are there in the soil so that they don't get washed away during heavy rains and things like that until you actually put your corn in. So some guys would spray it. I don't like to do that. I would rather plow it in and avoid the chemicals being that we're going to need new tillage anyway. I don't have a no-till planter which I think if this stuff was maybe bush hog down or something, it maybe would work, but maybe it's a colder spring and all that stuff. We're gonna plow it, so. So in the first pass, we gotta set the front one board a little lower on the Really, a way of 
capturing your nutrients that are already there before uh, the fall and winter and spring rains washes it away. And we're already in the middle of May, so we're not going to wait to harvest this stuff. We're going to get this corn in, I think. I think we're going to get a lot bigger punch out of our corn if we plant sooner and, and uh, use the rye for more of a fertilizer. So we'll, what we'll do when we're done plowing, we'll go over it with a disc just to groom it up a little bit. Try not to get those sod bunches tipped back over. We don't want to use a digger on this. since last year or last time I moldboard anyway which was several years looks like about right here by this, by this sign might be about the middle and this field is almost perfectly rectangle so that's gonna make it a little easier the thing is I I don't know how I'm gonna do the ends yet because then it ends up with another another furrow there but I think we're just going to go up on the top here. We're going to plow that. We'll take a look at it from the other end. Um, sometimes I can follow the old corn rows. And that's kind of nice too because then it keeps you nice and straight. So when you come to the center with, when it come to the end of the field, you got your, you got your bed for all, all together. You don't have a bunch of short rows to try to fill in. I wanted a rollover plow. They're not very popular around here. They're virtually impossible to find used. I did try to price a new one. The guy never got back to me. I assume he can't even find one. And then there's a, what they call uh, reversible plow, which I think is some sort of hydraulic system that's, that just slips the plow to the other side. So instead of plowing it to the right you're just throwing it to the left instead of turning the whole machine upside down and it's a lighter machine so you don't need as big of a tractor so right now we got 115 horse four wheel drive more than enough but if we had a rollover plow I think um, we'd need a bigger tractor especially in the hillsides this is to handle the weight itself I bought this plow back in the mid 80s for $200 on a farm auction actually quite cheap for those days but there was a time in there where nobody wanted to plow anymore they were all going to chisel plowing no till was starting to become very popular moldboard plow almost got to the point i think a lot of them got cut up by iron there's a lot of beaming and a lot of a lot of heavy iron in there people use for other stuff and now it, it's coming back and especially in organic farming and uh and i think what what we're finding out is even though we don't want to till much, we, some tillage is still necessary. Occasionally, even though you would do it all the time. And I think something like this is the perfect case for it. So I'm hoping I can get by without spraying this field with a Roundup product later on. It's hard to say for sure what that stuff's going to do. It's going to want to come through. I think it kind of depends on what the, what the weather does. How well the corn gets started if the corn gets ahead of it. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Should be 
So the next pass is the this front wheel will be in the furrow, which is your guide. And especially when a person has two-wheel drive, even if you don't quite hold the steering wheel straight, it pretty much stays in that furrow. You don't have to worry about it. Four-wheel drive, if you're if you're not holding the wheel just right, she'll climb out of that furrow. <laughs> just like artwork. So when I lift the plow out, I have to maneuver my hydraulics in such a way to keep it even so we don't end up with a, let's say, a real lumpy end of the field. There, not too bad. And the same with putting it in the ground. So we drop our front a little lower, then we gradually bring our front back up. And there's a setting on the on the three-point control that allows you to drop it to just a certain point like a notch in there where it'll set you don't have to guess every time bind it up. It's not really sticking to the tires or anything like that. I decided to split the field in another spot. So now we have three spots cut through. Well, actually four. So we got our ends and then two spots in the center. But we don't have so many end rows. It did look a little lower in the field in this spot. So again, just beautiful. And the way that soil is turning. <clears throat> It's like a farmer's dream. Usually things like this don't always turn out, but you can see the root mass. You can still see all them fine roots down in here from that rye. I mean, it's all the way through. Lots of goodies. Hopefully we can get a, get a punch out of this. But we're gonna keep going. This is the part that we have to be a little more careful with. What we do is I put the front down a little deeper, the back up a little bit. Kind of tilt the plow so your dead furrow isn't quite as obvious I guess. So I'm gonna go this way and then I'm gonna come back and throw some of that dirt from the other side right back in there. Because we don't want a hole in the field. And that's kind of the downside to these one-way plows. They're cheaper, they're easier to the pull. nice we can just throw the whole field one way and then the next time you do it you throw it all back the other way and it kind of evens out over time 